How long before we're a cashless society? This is where I get scared because it's too similar to the mark of the beast. It's too similar to exactly what it says. You won't be able to trade. You won't be able to do anything unless you have the mark. Many American businesses have already gone cashless as well. They'll pretend it's all about convenience, but really, you know, it's all about control. The emergence of a system for comprehensive control that's so complete that we can barely imagine it. It's already been introduced in China, for instance, and some states in the U.S. as well. Biometric digital ID. Countries like India, Estonia, Korea, there's a long list, have taken national steps to provide citizens who wish with a secure form of digital identification that can be presented online. A secure digital ID biometrically synced to your smartphone. We're headed toward a one world global government with one massive monstrous leader. How is the mark of the beast described in the Bible? We should read it. Then I saw another beast rising out of the earth. It had two horns like a lamb and it spoke like a dragon. It deceives those who dwell on earth. It also causes all, both small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand or the forehead, so that no one can buy or sell unless he has the mark. This calls for wisdom. Let the one who has understanding count Calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and his number is 666. A lot of people would like to see there, there are two orders in this world. This is a huge mistake. We need a single global order. So, how do we do it? I'm at Whole Foods, and I'm about to pay for my groceries with my... Ever. So it's a di digital ID that's in your linked hand, to your, your iPhone. Oh, okay. Okay, that's mm -hmm. linked to your iPhone, and then it has biometrics about you. Not only biometrics about you, it has things about you, right? Where you go, what you buy, where you eat, who you talk to, all of that will become meta data it's and it recorded. has recorded not yeah it's conversations recorded. are recorded yeah yeah it's recorded mm -hmm. so these things are logged i remember my wife and i we uh, checked out this amazon store in dc the way that the store operates it has it's a high top-notch ai store i think it's been in the news but people probably don't understand how it works it's a bunch of cameras the store is really has thousands of cameras so those cameras they are pointed at all of the products that you see in the store. The way that it works, you just walk in and walk out. There's no cashier. So how do you know what I bought or didn't buy when I picked something up and put it back down? All the cameras with machine learning technology, they've learned to track you when you go into the store and then track your every move something you pick up, something you even drink. It's all charged to your account. And you just walk out with your bag. You don't talk to nobody. It's incredible. <laughs> I mean, I've gone through that. I had a conference I went to that I attended and I had to meet with a vendor. And this vendor was an AI technology. And this was a technology <laughs> that allowed you to record your meetings on live streams. Yeah. And when you record your meeting, it does a map of the human's face that you're interacting with. So this is mm -hmm. for sales, apparently. And it can monitor when a person is frowning, when a person is upset, when a person becomes happy, when a person becomes excited, when a person responds well, doesn't respond well. Mm -hmm. So it's reading our emotion. Yeah. Well, in the video I sent you, the link I sent you, there, uh, there's an experiment that they, that they did with an AI. So they had a camera looking at a room the AI was able to map out where everyone was in a room. So what they did, they removed the camera. And then the only thing that the AI had now was radio signals through internet routers. The AI mapped out the entire room with the positions of the people exactly where they were using Wi-Fi routers. Now, the level of control uh, is just breaking glass ceiling, glass ceilings after glass ceilings. Now, it's not just a matter of installing a bunch of cameras. Now, the cell towers, they could be used 
And then they, we could map out the land. We could map out where people are. So the more advanced technology becomes, the more whoever is going to be in control of it. That's one of the reasons why Klaus Schwab, the head of the World Economic Forum, he's just pushing really hard for AI, for the technological advancement of AI. He just wants that to be, uh, to just be like, far ahead. He wants it to control agriculture, climate change, electric vehicles, all these things. He just, he wants that. They want that. But also the metaverse, new space technologies, and I could go on and on, synthetic biology. Our life in 10 years from now will be completely different, very much affected, and who masters those technologies in some way will be the master of the world. And I quote, who masters those technologies in some way will be the master of the world. Who will be this master of the world? Who will have complete control of those technologies? So yeah, for the master of the world, these people, I think they're working for according to the course of this world, they're working according to the power of the prince of the air, the spirit who was in us when we were dead uh, before Christ but God, but God. So we have to proclaim the gospel, continue to proclaim the gospel because those people who are just like them, the blind, dead in their sins, they think that they have this free will doing these things. But in all reality, the Bible teaches us that they're working according to the course of this world, which sits in the lap of the evil one. They're working according to the power of the prince of the air. Such were us. This was us. We were dead just like them, but God. So I, we have to proclaim the gospel so that they can have a but God moment as well. I, I doubt though that somebody like Klaus Schwab <laughs> That's what would I was even be, ask you. yeah, would even be responsive to, to the gospel, but. Is that Nobody. even possible? If say we're dead in our sin, we've been given over to a reprobate mind. So now where do we go? How is Klaus Schwab ever going to come to Christ? How would that actually take place? And is that possible if he has been abandoned due to all of that he has done? Yeah, uh, it's still possible, right? It's mm -hmm. still possible. N now, it God gave them over the wrath of abandonment. You could, you still see grace in it. God gave okay. them over, and not to. He gave them over and took them from. He took them from the planet and put them on Mars or Venus or wherever, wherever else you could name. He gave them over. They're still living in this world with the people of God, glorifying Christ, preaching the gospel, calling them to repentance. That's grace. That's mercy there. You know when there will be no grace and mercy? When they're dead. There's no preacher in hell. There's no one proclaiming the gospel. There's no YouTube channel with John Henry, Justin Peters, John MacArthur, R.C. Spool, you and I proclaiming the gospel. That's, that's the point of no return. There is, though, a point of no return for certain people god uh, talked about it in, i think in the book of exodus and throughout scripture as well where there's this language since they would not believe they would not believe they would not believe and they come to a point where they could not believe since they weren't willing to believe they come to a point where they would not believe it's kind of like the conscience is seared you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's just it just falls over it and it just f drops on the floor. So there's a point, there is a point of no return. However, when God abandons those people and they're abandoned, but th they still live among us, the, they are the mission field, not the, en the enemy per se, the mission field. So that's the grace I see there, God okay. keeping them here. When you say mission field, what do you mean by mission field? This is the people that we are targeting to help. Yeah. Those are the people that we are talking that they are the mission field. When we call them to repentance or just like, as Paul says, uh, God calls every man under the sun, every, all men everywhere of all tribe, tongue and nation to repent today. Those men, they are the mission field. The ones who don't know Christ, the ones that are in darkness, the ones that are living in desolation away from God, away from the presence of God, as it were, the spirit of God and living in darkness. Those are the mission field. Right. Yeah. So yeah. that's, that's a lot of people. I'm sure a lot. So sure there are a lot of listeners and followers and subscribers to your channel 
that like me are different now. They've changed and to their family members, to people that might have been close to them at one time. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit of a different subject, but it's a thought that yeah. I think is important, which is I've got family members that are in the darkness. They see me. They don't understand me. Mm -hmm. They don't really know me. They do, but they avoid me. They don't want to hear me start talking about it, right? They don't want to <laughs> hear me start telling them, hey, I heard this guy, a friend of mine is you know, going into hospice. And I say something like, oh, I hope his salvation is in place. I hope he believes and I hope he's you know, turned his will and his life over. And they don't understand why I'm saying that because I've never said something like that to them yeah. before. It would be, oh, yeah. too bad. Oh, well, that's tough luck or something or, oh, darn.